Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Sun Woodworks here on my YouTube channel. My name is Caleb and I appreciate you dropping by. Today I'm going to be showing you a really cool method for how I cut out some wooden letters, actually quite a few wooden letters, for my sister's store up in Montana. Hope you'll stick around. Now before we take a deep dive into this project, before we get into the meat gritty before we get into the deep details, I'm going to ask that you hit that subscribe button below and the little bell icon next to it so that every time I release a new video, you'll be notified. And this is a great way to help the Second Sun Woodworks YouTube channel and ensure that it survives well into the future. Hit the subscribe button. For all of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate you taking a visit. Go check out the rest of my videos over in my library. Got a lot to offer. Also, I recently launched a brand new website that is a perfect hub for all of you DIYers and woodworkers out there who love to watch project videos and browse blogs and check out cool tools for sale. Go check it out, secondsunwoodworks.com. Oh, and the last thing I'll mention is my new spring merchandise store on spring.com. I have a link in the about section of my YouTube channel as well as in the header of my website. You can find some really cool merch on there with the Second Sun Woodworks logo such as a hoodie or a mug or a t-shirt or a sticker. Go check it out. All right, enough of that. Let's get started. If you're anything like me and you enjoy woodworking, but you don't have thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy really super expensive tools such as a CNC machine, then this tip might be helpful to you. As you can see here, I am using a printed out letter L in the desired font for the letters of the store sign. And I'm attaching it to a piece of walnut with some two-sided tape and then using some packing tape to cover the outside of the letter. This will enable me to take the piece of wood over to the scroll saw and cut a near perfect L. Now, if you're comparing the prices between what it would cost to buy a scroll saw versus buying a new CNC machine, I'm pretty sure it's a lot more affordable to go with the scroll saw. This scroll saw costs close to $400 compared to a CNC machine that usually will cost around $1,000 for a decent CNC machine. Plus, a CNC machine requires a computer to run the program that you input the desired plans for a cut. Uh, that the CNC machine will make. On the other hand, using a scroll saw is pretty quick to learn and it is a extremely useful tool for lots of other projects. Now I'm not saying that CNC machines are not awesome and I would absolutely love to have one in the future, but that time is not now. And so I decided to use a scroll saw. Scroll saws are somewhat like a bandsaw, but there are some big differences that enable you to do different types of cuts that you can't do on a bandsaw. I'll get more into that later on. Carving out these letters was pretty straightforward and once I got into the rhythm, things went pretty fast. The great part about this video is that I will be going through the steps a number of times. So if you keep watching, you're gonna know exactly what to do when you get into your shop. Stick around throughout the whole entire video for a surprise at the end. As you can see here, to start off each of the letters, I would cut down a piece of walnut from this rough cut SLR that's about 15 16 thick that I picked up at the local lumber supply store, Helena Hardwoods in Helena. And then I attached the letter. Now I was able to use the previous L from the first L that I did uh, to just save a little bit on ink. Now, it's important that you use both the two-sided tape for attaching the paper with the letter to the wood, as well as the packing, masking, uh, clear tape on the outside of the letter, because as you begin to cut, uh, you will actually be cutting through the paper as well. And so if you don't have that two-sided tape, attaching it to the letter 
then it will move. Now, there are a lot of different tips that I can relate to you when it comes to using the scroll saw, uh, and I'll do a lot of those within this video. But the first one is to make sure that the tension is right in between uh, the two sections that attach the blade. Okay, now that I have gone through the process just a couple times to make sure I fully understand how to do all of the different steps, let's go ahead and start doing uh, each of the steps for each of the letters all together, speed things up a bit. Uh, and so for this first step, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out all the different pieces of walnut wood with my circular saw, or actually, actually it's not my circular saw, it's my brother's circular saw that I borrowed uh, from him. Thanks, Josh. This is oftentimes how I do projects like this that are completely new to me. I'll do the whole process a number of times to get a feel and figure out which steps can be consolidated uh, down, such as just cutting out the walnut wood for the different letters. Doing work like this allows you to really understand the process before you begin doing it for all of your material. Uh, and then when the time does come to consolidate your steps down, uh, you're a lot faster and you're more productive. This is a helpful tip for all of you people out there. At this point, I had 19 letters left to cut on the scroll saw if you include the period on the EST, EST uh, for the 1939. But funny thing is, is that we ended up changing the date. I'll tell you more about that later on. And so from there, after finishing up the two-sided tape on all of the different letters, I went ahead and moved on to using the packing clear tape to cover the entire letter. And this is a step that is maybe easy to skip because you think, oh, maybe I don't need it. Uh, but I do think that it is quite helpful when it comes to cutting the letters out on the scroll saw because the scroll saw is moving quite a bit and creating a little bit of a breeze, I guess you could say. Uh, and you're pushing the workpiece through the scroll saw. Oftentimes the letter, printed letter, has a tendency to move. And so the more tape that you are able to use, the easier it will be during the cutting process. Now, since I consolidated this step and did all of the taping all at once, I could then bring over a stack of the letters to the scroll saw and get to cutting. I wouldn't have to get up and down to do the taping process and the cutting process. Very helpful. Oh, and I decided to use some goggles, some swimming goggles, to try to help out with the dust. Huh. Okay, so tip number two for using the scroll saw is let the blade do the work. And don't try to twist the blade with a curvature in your workpiece. This is important uh, and it will save you a lot of stress.
Tip number three for using the scroll saw is to make sure that you have the hold down shoe adjusted to the proper thickness of the material that you're using. This will also enable the blade guard and the air nozzle to be up against your workpiece. If you don't do this, then your workpiece will fly off of the cast iron work table and really rattle the whole machine. It doesn't work well. So make sure you use that shoe correctly. Tip number four is protection, safety. Make sure you wear some sort of dust protection, something for your eyes, something for your ears, and if possible, strap up a vacuum to the scroll saw in whatever means possible. This is important, there's a lot of dust, and dust is harmful to the body. Also, don't forget to take a break. Breaks are important. Wow, we are already at tip number five, which is actually more of just a benefit of the scroll saw, is that you can start a cut inside of a letter, say, by doing a drill mark and then inserting the blade, taking the blade off first and then inserting it in to the hole in your work surface, reattaching it, and then you can cut from there. But don't drop the blade into the machine because uh, then you'll have to take the side panel off. But regardless, this is a great benefit slash tip of using a scroll saw. One might note that this is one of the main differences between a scroll saw and a bandsaw. A bandsaw has a continuous blade that is a loop and runs continuously and a scroll saw is instead hosting a blade that is just one piece and you can attach it at the top and the bottom of the blade and deattach it to insert into a workpiece or take the workpiece out. TIP number six is maybe a bit more self-explanatory to all of you folks out there who have used a tool like this in the past, but let the tool do the work. You don't need to do the work. That's why you have a tool, so let it do the work. <laughs> Tip number seven brings us all the way back around to safety. And this safety tip comes in regard to your hand placement. Make sure that your hands do not cross in front of the blade or behind the blade. Keep your hands out of the way of that blade. It might be a small blade, but it is a mighty blade and it could do some damage. And that damage is not worth it. So do it. Tip number eight, to keep steady tension on that blade. You can see here that there are a few moments where I stretch the blade or push the blade too hard and it kind of bends back as I push the workpiece into the blade. Now, it's better to keep a steady tension on the blade, even if you go through points of the wood that say maybe have a knot or something a bit more difficult for the blade to cut through let the blade catch up. You might need to slow up just a little bit so that you don't push the blade too much. Keep that steady tension so that it is at a 90 degree angle 
with the two different sides uh, that you attach the blade to the scroll saw. Tip number nine, save your scraps. Those scraps could come in handy. And I'm actually gonna show you a pretty cool way of using them, so stay tuned to the Second Sun Woodworks channel and I'll show you how I use the scraps from this project. Number 10 here on this beautiful Second Sun Woodworks channel is to don't be afraid to scrub down your dust card. Keep that thing clean because if it's not clean you're not going to be able to see your work piece. So wipe it down every once in a while. Mm. Tip number 11 for all of you folks who are still watching this video at this point. I'm quite impressed that you're still sticking around. But anyways, tip number 11 is to pay attention to the details. Sounds silly, but when you're cutting out letters on a scroll saw, it's easy to get carried away in all of the productivity or the challenge, the cutting. It's easy to get carried away but it's important to make sure that you don't get too carried away that you forget to pay attention to the details. So pay attention in, to those sweet details. All right, tip number 12, one, two. Can't believe we're already up to 12. That's pretty crazy. Wow. Anyways, don't try to cut letters that are too small. The smaller the letter, the piece of wood is, the harder it will be to clamp between the hold down shoe and the work table. Uh, so don't let your letters get too small. Or should I say, don't let the wood that you're cutting get too small? Nobody really likes small wood, right? Hmm. Tip number 13 is make sure that your scroll saw is securely attached to the tabletop that it is mounted to because it does vibrate a lot. So 
so you don't want to vibrate it right off the table and into your lap. That could be bad. Tip number 14. We're already up to 14. That's um, crazy. I bet you didn't think we'd make it here. <laughs> but we did. We surely did. Anyways, tip number 14 is to slow down and enjoy the process. Because, hey, you don't get to cut wood all the time. And when you do get to cut wood, you should enjoy it. Get that fresh sawdust smell in your nose. Hopefully not too much, because you should be wearing protection. But anyways, enjoy it. It's a nice process. Cutting wood is nice. Especially if it's nice walnut like this. So enjoy it. Mm. Tip number 15 is don't let those naysayers get you down. If you're starting off using a new tool like a scroll saw, it might be confusing at first, and you might not know exactly what you're doing. But if you keep with it and you keep practicing, you'll eventually become pretty good at it. And along the way, there's probably gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be naysayers and say negative things and put you down but ignore them, they're just part of it. All right, I hope you found those 15 tips for using the scroll saw to be useful. Now as I finish up cutting these last few numbers for the SEST, for the time, the date that the store was founded, I'm going to go ahead and note that we ended up changing this date because at a Christmas party we had a few of the older owners of the store that are in the community of Elliston come by and say that the uh, date that it was founded was actually not 1939. And so we ended up changing the date to 1890. And so I'll be coming back to the scroll saw later on in this project and making an eight and a zero for that date. But as you can see here, the letters are looking pretty good. The very last tip though in this video for making letters like this is to get yourself a quarter round bit for your router so that you can round over the edges of those letters. And you'll see here that I take my palm router, my DeWalt palm router, and I mount it to the sign or what would be kind of my workbench at the time with a couple clamps. And then I use that quarter round bit to round over the edges of all of the letters. Now, this is a process that you wanna be very careful with since the letters themselves are not super big uh, and when you're cutting the edges you want to make sure to keep your hands out of the way also make sure to wear dust protection eye protection ear protection all the protections <laughs> but anyways this tip is a great way to make those letters just look a little bit nicer a little bit more refined uh, and take away that really sharp edge Alright folks, we are coming to the end of this video. You've wasted another 23 minutes or 25 minutes watching a Second Sun Woodworks YouTube video and I gotta say, 
thank you. Thanks for sticking around to the very end of this video. I hope that you have found it to be helpful uh, and that I was able to share some of these tips with you on how to use a scroll saw and how to cut letters without a CNC, without those expensive tools uh, in a much more affordable manner, but in a way that still creates beautiful wooden letters. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Comment if you have questions, or if you just want to say you liked it. And uh, get in the shop. Build something cool. I'll see you next time.